If you're interested in learning about cybersecurity, IT, security compliance, risk management framework, how to advertise yourself in IT and cybersecurity, check us out on ConvoCourses.com. We've got free courses. It's free to sign up, and I'm always releasing new stuff on there. All right, let's go. All right, so these top six controls are some of the most important ones, and I talk about this in greater detail in the course, in the, in the part of the free course, I talk a little bit about it, but I go in more depth in the one that's coming out. I'm going to try to release it this month, but I talk about AC1, AC2, and right now we're going to talk about AC3. AC3, Access Control 3, is Access Enforcement. So what is Access Enforcement? It is the organization's ability to implement the actual access control policies. So not only does your organization have to put a policy in place that talks about how to control access, AC3 says you have to implement it. How they implemented this, the actual access to the information. Like you're saying in this document that you have access controls and you're saying that a person has to be trained before they come in. You're saying, now do you do it? Is it implemented throughout your organization? All right. So that's what we're going to talk about. All right. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And you can follow along. Feel free to follow along with me if you like. What I'm doing is I am on NIST. Let me see if I can give you this link here if you want to follow along. Nope, I can't sign into the chat. But where I'm at is nist.nvd.nist.gov if you want to follow along with me. That's where I'm at right now. You go to Google and type in nvd.nist.gov, you'll find it. And if you go to, once you get there, you'll click on the families like this. Let me just show you real quick. Click on the families. This site has all the families, breaks each one down, as you can see here. And then I went to access controls, and you got access control one, two, and now we're on three. So I'm clicking on three right here if you want to follow along. You can also just download the PDF, the NIST 853 PDF, and then look at 853 AC3, and you'll find everything we're seeing right here. So what are we talking about here? This right here breaks down what AC3 is, access enforcement. All right, so let's just look at the actual description here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can read this together and then we're gonna interpret it. The information system enforces approved authorization for logical access to information and system resources in accordance with the applicable access control policy. All right, so let's break this down. So the information system enforces, information system, what is an information system? It's a computer, it's a server, it's a workstation, it's a Cisco device, it's an internet working device, it's a firewall. Information system covers all like that ground. It's a very general term, but what we're saying here, the AC3 says it enforces whatever system that is. Let's say it's a Windows 2016 server. It enforces approved authorizations for logical access to the information system. So in other words, there's logical. What do we mean by logical? So there's technical things in place on the system that enforce what you have written in your security policy. That is what they're saying here. So logical access, I'll give you a specific example on our example of a server, 2016 Windows Server, right? So a logical access would be, or enforcement of that logical access would be username and password, simple enough. If your organization wrote in your policy that everyone who comes in has to have a username and the username has to be 20 characters. <laughs> the username has to fit a certain certain policy, and then the password has to fit a certain policy. Password has to be 14 characters long, has to use upper or lowercase. All that stuff's in your policy, right? They're saying that you have to 
have implemented that into the actual server itself. And so, then before I show you how you as an information system security officer can actually check this out and make sure that the organization is doing it, let's just deep dive into this a little bit further. All right, so in here it's, it's finishing out the sentence. It says, the information and system resources in accordance with applicable access control policies. Yeah, there's, so there you go. The organization writes the policy and then the system has to actually implement what you said in the policy. That's what it's saying right here. That's really the name of the game here. So as an information system security officer, I've been doing this for a long time and the name of the game is the organization creates a policy, right? The policy states what the rules are to having access to your environment and then making sure as the information system security officer, you're making sure that all of those policies are documented, that they're in place. And if they're not in place, you have to work it out with the stakeholders. And one of the things that you can do is a plan of action and milestone, but that's for a whole nother discussion. Okay, so let's, let's just like look at a little bit more of this so we can get more details. Supplemental guide. So this is a great, supplemental guides are great because they put it in plain English what they're saying here. So once again, if, if you're joining this late, this is AC3 and I'm talking about, we're interpreting it and then we're talking about how to implement this as an information system security officer. All right, so let's get back into this. The supplemental guide says, access control policies and identify based policies, role based policy, control matrix, cryptography. So these are some of the things you might put in your security control, in your access control policy or your overall security policy. They're just giving you some examples. So control access between activities, entities or subjects. So they're talking about here are some examples. You might have cryptography. That crypt cryptography might be between the user object and a, a file. The way they write these is try to be as general as possible so that the organization has the freedom to implement the level of security that they need for their environment because there's many kinds of environments. That's why they write these like this. All right, so and they said, okay, give you an example of different kinds of entities, active entities and subjects, users or processes acting on behalf of users. Passive entities or objects, see just what I just said. So they're saying that the access control policy will have some sort of a role based or a cryptography or something between different objects within the environment. That's what they're saying here in this guidance. But let me show you, let's put this in action. Okay, where I'm at right now is what's called, we're on AC3, but I'm on a document called 800-53A. Here's how you can determine whether or not your organization is actually implementing the AC3 in uh, access enforcement. You go to, this is just one of the things you can do, by the way, one of the, one of the main things that I do. You go to 853A. And 853A is how you assess each one of the controls, all the controls. It has every single one of the controls. So 853A, the reason why it's so useful is because whenever a system is assessed, this document is what they actually use or some parts of this document is what they might use. And they, the assessor might not even know that they're using 853A, but all the assessment stuff comes from this source document. So it's very useful. Okay, so first of all, Assessment objectives for AC3. Determine if the information system enforces approved authorizations for logical access. This is what we just read, right? So the assessor has to make sure that, number one, you have a security policy, right? Or some kind of a policy, and that a policy addresses access controls. Now the assessor, one of their objectives is to make sure that the technical security features that you put on your system are in place and they match what was written and approved by your organization in the security policy. That's all they're doing. They're saying, okay, what do you have in your security policy? All right, are you doing that on this Windows 6 2016 server? Let's see. That's what they'll do. They'll just say, okay, log into the system. You'll log into the system and it meets that just you logging in 
meets one of the access controls because one of the access controls is that everybody will have a role a role everybody will have a username password everyone will have a role and then what they might do is say okay log in let me see you log in with a normal user account and then they'll say okay now try to access this file system that you're not supposed to access they'll they'll tell you to access like say the audit logs or something a normal user shouldn't be able to access the audit logs so that's the kind of things that they do now let, let me show you something else potential assessment methods and objectives so this is things that a an assessor can use to assess whether or not you have implemented ac3 you can either examine you can interview or you can test right so normally for ac3 from what i've seen they do two things they look at your uh your access control policy which is normally in your security policy and then they they say okay let me see what you got let me let me see you do it let me see you access that system let me see you access the backup drives and then they're determining whether or not you can so that's one of the things that they do now let's go to another control here 